guys for coming to today's stream. Anyone who is not familiar with me, I am Levy, and I'm usually hanging out here being weird with everybody else. Today, um, I'm happy to be hosting the Fireside Chat. We're going to be talking with members of the Instant Lives Foundation and some awesome friends. Um, for those who are not aware, the Instant Lives Foundation is a organi nonprofit organization full of security professionals whose mission is to identify um, anonymous child predators online and help bring them to justice. We use a lot of open source intelligence tools and skills in order to identify predators and hand cases to law enforcement. If you want to help out and join the fight, please donate to the ILF throughout this stream. Before, after, there's a million ways to do it, to help out, and we would love any and all of that. It's all encouraged. It, during this stream, or any stream on this channel, you can donate using... Uh, I'm going to put it in the chat right now. The explanation point, donate. And any other of our main tools that you need, you can, you'll can you see them pop up. They're part of the title for this evening, and you'll see them um, pop up here and then as mods pop into the chat. I'm going to have to fix something because they're not popping up, but we will fix that. <laughs> um, now I'm going to... Unmute everybody else so all of you crazy people can actually talk to the world. Um, hey, thanks for people who have already started following and donating. Thank you guys so much. Now I'm going to pass the world over to the one and only Ashiobe and the one and only Blind Hackers. All right. Hey, guys, we'll let you know when that donate button is fixed. Uh, in the meantime, my name is Shelby, and I'm a volunteer with Innocent Lives Foundation. Uh, so welcome to our next fireside chat. Um, tonight, we have with us Joe B, who is also known as the Blind Hacker. So he's an InfoSec expert, uh, the chief hacking officer of the Dead PixelSec community, and an ambassador for the IOF. So welcome, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Um... That's a good introduction. Uh, a lot of people uh, who do know me know that I do a lot of uh, community give back through the dead pixel capabilities. Uh, we a uh, small community, uh, small being relative. Uh, well, what are we at? We're 17, 1800 members. Uh, you know, we grow and we prune and we grow and we prune. And um, that's actually what allows me to, you know, I, I don't know what it is, allows me to do. It's what keeps me doing the things that I do, uh, being able to find it, uh, even after a crazy day at work to come on to fireside chats, to come on and do streams and come on and do podcasts to, uh, continue to share what I know and hopefully encourage people to, to do some things. Yeah. It's a very cool community. I haven't taken a huge deep dive into it, but I am a part of it and kind of I kind of lurk around and look, see what's happening. What got you started and got you wanting to create that and kind of bring it together? So um, as with a lot of things, uh, ultimately it was totally a random series of random acts. Um, I started streaming because I wanted to feel more comfortable talking in front of other people, right? Um, I really wanted to present at my favorite conferences because um, I had gone in and sat down in some conversations and some other people's talks. And I was like, hey, I know that much about this topic. Why can't I be the one talking about it? Um, you know, so things like that. And so eventually I said, well, I really want to talk at DerbyCon. Um, we all know DerbyCon's not around anymore, but it was... Uh, great to actually finally have worked up the courage and defeated enough of the inside imposter uh, that I applied to do a talk or filled out a CFP and got accepted to do a talk there. And so that was a real big win on my part. Uh, and so, but as I built, as I built the comfort and the streaming to get in front of people, um, I built accidentally a community because I started streaming uh, like <laughs> gamers and I modeled a lot of what I did off of what the gamers do. Um, 
you know, from the, from that perspective. So I was like, oh, let me create a discord. Let me create a common place. People can come. Let me throw out my Twitter. Let me link all these things together and do a thing. And then I approached a couple um, older slacks that had been deprecated or just like, you know, 200 members in the last person talked six months ago. Um, I turn around and would say, Hey guys, um, why don't you come check out this thing I'm trying to do? And then sure enough, people started to join and build the community. And then it was probably after even about six, eight months, I realized that the community was no longer about me as the blind hacker, as this guy who's trying to build a following. Um, uh, Cause I actually don't have a, I, I'm very narcissistic, but I don't have an ego. Um, <laughs> Um, so it was really interesting for me to then say, hey, my community that I've built is no longer about me. And then, you know, every time I try to like pull away from the community, like you guys are so autonomous, you can do this without me. Um, people rein me back in because most of the time it's because of depression. <laughs> um, like, oh, I don't deserve this. You guys are too great. And then I'm like, I'm going to take a step away and people are like, uh, you mean, so we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> That's um, awesome. So it kind of became your your personal community, but I think it has for a lot of other people as well. Yeah, um, it's definitely became home. Um, it was I I now have what I would consider lifelong friends just from people joining the community, like many communities that you join and you build. Um, it was surprising that uh people really wanted to hear what i had to say and because of that i learned that our community isn't as ultimately you know if you go hit twitter any certain time of week or day or something people are uh cybersecurity toxic 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 and you're like no no it's really not um it's harsh it sucks there are bad people in it but for the most part if you find that you need support all you got to do is ask and Somebody will be there. And so some of the ways that I think I gained popularity and really brought that pixel up was by saying, hey, I, and being serious about it too, not just saying it, but like, hey, I want to hear what you have to say. I value what you have to say. So I'm giving you a place to come say it. Yeah. yeah. So really just focusing on building those relationships and, you know, making, making friends, reaching out to people is just kind of how it evolved, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's been the powerful statement behind Dead Pixel is the amount of people who have said, I'm underemployed, I'm not even in cyber, how do I do a thing? And then the people that said, I can help you to the best of my ability. And to now years later, see, you know, dozens of people have new jobs, hundreds of people learning, thousands of people learning new things. Um, you know, we keep a revolving door, people come in, people go out, they go, you know, it's been a while since I've chatted there. So I'm going to, you know, leave the community. But you know, I see the value there. It's just, you know, uh, either we talk too much red team, too much blue team, too much whatever, <laughs> but then they, they go and then they come back, they go, okay, uh, what you are doing does provide value to the community. Ultimately, I'm like, that's, you know, uh, I have a, a personal mantra that um, if you've ever seen any of our challenge points, unfortunately, we need to get more made. Um, there's binary on the front and back, and one size is educate, the other size evolve. And that's been my personal mantra for decades. I want to always be changing, and I don't need to be better than anyone else. And this, this is, uh, we could go into a crazy conversation about that, but I don't ever need to be better than anyone else. I just need to be better than me yesterday. So the next day I try to do better. If I feel like I'm not doing good, I try to do better the next day. And that's just something that's personally driven me and it's caused myself a lot of grief. But I can say for the majority of my career, the majority of my education, the majority of my life, it's it's happened. It's worked out for me. And well, I think that that's a great way to look at it, right? Because th that won't prohibit you from asking questions or using the people around you as resources. Whereas if you, you know, kind of put your, your ego first and say, well, I have to be better than them. You're really just doing yourself a disservice because you're not going to grow or learn anything. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, 
a lot of people go, why they named the blind hacker? Well, so some people know, but for p viewers who don't, um, at 16, uh, I woke up on my 16th birthday, normal, <laughs> the air quotes up, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, relatively speaking, physically normal. Uh, six days afterwards, I had lost 80% of my vision. Um, they did numerous tests and the tests were inconclusive. So they thought it was hysterical blindness. They thought I was literally forcing myself to lose my vision via the power of my mind. And, goodness, I've never even heard of that before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and after then going to therapy, which everybody could use a little bit. Um, oh, agreed. <laughs> but being forced into it because they literally think I'm, you know, losing my shit. I was like, oh, you know. And then eventually they find find a physical reason. Um, then they go, you know, okay. So what, what do I do now? So then I tried to go through uh, rehabilitation services and try to figure out how the rest of my life was going to be lived. Because when you're 16 and suddenly your potential for independence and freedom are stripped away in a period of six days, how do you, you know, what are you supposed to feel about that? And then, you know, I didn't even know what I had for another year. I was, you know, darn near seven, uh, in darn near, or I guess shortly after my 17th birthday. And it's like, Oh, finally, I have this thing, but how do we treat it? How do we get better? And when you look it up, you're like, you don't. It's, this is going to be your life. And Man, so then, you had to wait that long for an answer as to even what it was. And then, less, like you said, what are the next steps? <laughs> yeah, well, much less, how do I rehabilitate it? Uh, mm -hmm. How do I learn to be blind when no one else in my family has even had to deal with anything like this? And because I was the first one. And then you go, so that's where the, the name came from, because ultimately I am legally blind, visually impaired. Um, and then, you know, I, I turned around and uh, I've told this story several times. Um, the state said, hey, why don't you, uh, we want you to be, have rehabilitation services. Uh, it's easier for us to do it while you're a teenager because there's more money available. Why don't you go to a university and see if this university can help you get started with computer IT stuff, because you're kind of showed a proficiency for that. So I go there, uh, and this is the other reason that DevHub is so important to me. So I go to this university, I sit down, I take the this proficiency test, I do the HTML, I read a little bit of code, I write everything, and then I get, uh, and I, I scored well enough. Uh, you know, I didn't know everything. Of course, I'm not going to know everything. You know, freaking 18 year old punk kid <laughs> who's hacking <laughs> things and taking apart Linux and and still trying to build computers, even though he's visually impaired and all this crazy stuff. And then uh, I get in front of this instructor and he's like, here's a bunch of hardware components. I need you to put them together. I said, okay. So I do it. The only thing I ask for is on the CPU, the little golden tab, um, like, hey, which corner is it? I, I put it in, I seed it, I get the uh, operating system installed, which is essentially passing the A plus in a physical manner, right? right. Um, at least back then. Uh, I don't know what it's like now. It seems insane. That it's like <laughs> it's a little. So. I'm I'm actually studying for it right now, and I'm struggling a little. I have I have no technical skills, so it's a, uh, it's it's interesting. <laughs> but I, well, I'm I'm following everything that you're saying so far. So maybe I have a shot. Who knows? <laughs> um. So from there, uh, this instructor tells me, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't do this. You're probably not going to make it in this industry. I just don't see it happening for you. And I took it to heart. I believe them because they were um, older. They were um, the authority on the subject, the right? Yeah, yeah. And then it was like I went two years. I I turned. I was like doing it on the side. I was making oh, I whatever to whatever people would pay me. I, I'll fix your computer. Just let me fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and then went from there. And and then one day I finally got the job. And uh, that's, again, I've got, got, I've told the good stories about that, but. Um, wow. And so the instructor formed that opinion based on basically your, your one question during that, that project. I don't know. Uh, I wish. I know that uh, it's one of those things, like I want to go tell the person and be like, Hey, you caused a lot of heartache for me because as an educator, yeah. you didn't believe in me as a student or as a child you ultimately hurt me 
and who I could have been, but ultimately I'm extraordinarily happy with who I've been. So anytime people come to Dead Pixel, this is where the loop of the Dead Pixel is. I, I tell people, hey, again, no matter what you say, you have value. I don't care if it's a rookie question, just ask it in the right place because we have, uh, you know, my community's done some wild things. We have um, young teenage boy uh, who uh, from another country and he's like, we help him learn ing- like better English. We help him do all this other stuff and then he builds this up. And then we had another one come in who he's been in there almost since the whole time. He's damn near about to be an adult, has programming, A plus, built servers, automation, building his own uh, AI now. And it's like, okay, that's really cool. And then yeah, we've also awesome. got, we've got people who I'm in my forties, I'm in my fifties. This is my second career. How do I do a thing? And I'm like, get, and they're like, nobody wants to talk to me. I'm, I'm just the old loser. I'm like, why, why would you think that? Why would you go there? Like, I truly believe what you have to say has value. So let's talk. Let's see if I can convince you, you have value. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems like that's, that's a place and those are conversations that people are looking for, right? Those are the connections that people are looking for these days. So to have a community like that, somewhere you can go, that's just a huge weight off of some people's shoulders. So you, you, uh, I I looked up um, uh, just a little bit on it and I noticed one of the things that you really kind of promote is no matter what stage of learning you're at, if you're a noob, if if you're, you know, been doing this for a long time, you know, we want you to come here. So what would you say to those who are a little bit nervous because they don't have that knowledge? Uh, I think just what, what is the worst that can happen of you joining a community? I mean, I know I've seen the internet. I know what the worst can happen. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I'm telling you the doors open. You don't have to stay. You can always come back. You know, the, it's a community. We always have drama. We always have something going on. Uh, you know, throughout the years, we've had huge mod and staff change ups. Uh, but you know what? Everybody's welcome back. Everybody who wants to do good, be great, learn something, whatever it is. I don't care. I, I don't care if you've personally hurt me, my feelings. There's a, some even stories there, but it's like, ultimately, I don't care. I'm not going to hold a grudge. I honestly, it's one of those things that you, I just don't care anymore. Uh, what I want you to do though, is when you come in, you need to be willing to either learn or teach or do both. Because I've also found that I've been able to take people who are like, I don't know anything. I don't, I don't know a thing. I know this stuff, but nobody wants to know that. I guarantee you somebody wants to know that. Um, and trying to put together mentorships uh, and like trying to pair people up, but also not burden the other individuals and, and have them be too consumed by the people that come in the community. And that's, and I've tried to say this before too, in multiple ways, like when you have, when you go to select a mentor, don't select one, don't select two, select 10 people, 10 people. If you go ask the same question, by the way, I want you to get a different answer. Um, Cause that's what'll provide value to you as an individual. And in our community, it's actually kind of easy to find somebody who'll give you at least their opinion, maybe not the best mm-hmm. advice, but at least their opinion. <laughs> Well, different perspectives can be really valuable. I mean, I think especially in, well, take it back to, you know, when you were in school, had someone else provided a different perspective or maybe helped you learn in a different way that could have had a huge impact on your life. Yeah. I often wonder what it could have been like differently, uh, already having a job by the time I was uh, 21 or actually finishing my degree. Um or even starting a degree <laughs> or any number <laughs> of things that the state was willing to help me do um, instead of kind of not advocating for myself, you know, and that's something else yeah. that dead pixel becomes a big uh, proponent of is like, if you're not going to stand up for yourself, I, I can't stand up for you all the time. Like I'm not in your shoes. I'm not in your business now. If there's something going on in the community uh, somewhere else and there's, you know, issues like let's, let's mediate those. But when, when it's like, if you can't also go out on your own in this case and say, Hey, could, can someone help me? If you can't comfortably ask that, 
I, I try to point it out to people like, hey, this person has really expressed interest in that. Anybody want to help them? Um, I did it today. Um, somebody was looking for um, some additional training on a entry-level pen test cert uh, uh, from a big vendor out there. And I said, well, I don't have insight into that one, but I heard it's good. And I tagged those people and they gave that person insight. And you know, I'm, I'm hoping that the person sees it as not me calling them out. Oh, hey, you're dumb. These people know it already. But see it as, hey, these people, you can ask them the question that you might be scared to ask. Right. And they'll answer it. They're not going to call you dumb. These are people I trust because they are here, because I call them mentors. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, that was an interesting point, too, about just learning to advocate for yourself. Um, and I'm sure that was a, a learning curve, especially being legally blind and in the tech industry. Did you find that there were a lot of provisions already, or did you have to kind of spearhead that and <laughs> sort it out yourself? Um, I say this with, with all the respect to people who do admire and respect me, and, and I love it, but, but out there in the world at large, the visually impaired specifically, and then the disabled, uh, kind not secondarily, but equally, but I see it a lot with visually impaired, are often not even a top piece of anybody's focus. Um, you know, we've got a multi-billion dollar website that does multi-billion dollars of transaction, but if you go on there and type in green t-shirt, and you keep scrolling uh, after the first page, some of those t-shirts are no longer green, but the label says green t-shirt. So now imagine being colorblind and saying, I really need a green t-shirt. And you go there and you buy a green t-shirt and you get it. You don't know that it's not green. You get it, you wear it out. You're like, cool, hey guys, green t-shirt club, what's up? And it's yellow or brown or <laughs> something else. Yeah, and, there's just... and, uh, you know, I, there's a uh, actually a couple uh, blind TED, TED talkers who talk about this too. Uh, fantastic speeches about how accessibility, specifically for the blind and disabled, um, is just not even a backseat. Like they left it on the side of the road decades ago. And when it comes to work and my business and the things that I do, I want to be honest. Um, working for government contractors, government agencies, and commercial agencies. At this point, I've, I've just learned to come in, know that either I'm going to have to pay or deal with the software or deal with those things and, or find the person who is in charge of the 508 software or who's in charge of the change request to put that in. And that may be why I'm such a powerful advocate. I don't know. Um, forcing me to learn that lesson. So when uh a few years ago i had some family members uh finally start to get affected by this disability um, it's called labor's hereditary optic neuropathy it's a really big name um so when they get like they got affected by lhon i had to like be like hey you need to advocate for yourself and being a family of uh do it ourselves that's really tough uh yeah, but yeah. because i had to do it early it's second nature to me because if i can't function why am i going to bother showing up Right. Absolutely. This is, well, this whole conversation about advocating for yourself is just, it's really interesting to me. I um, have done a little bit of work with the deaf and blind community. So on the deaf side, I uh, interpreted for, for kids in schools. Right. And okay. it's, so it is hard kind of finding that, that fine line, especially with kids, they don't always know how to advocate for themselves yet. So, you know, when you're talking like four years old, a lot of the time as the interpreter, you have to advocate to the teachers, right? because they don't have the language to do so at that point. But then I've had some students that I work with who it's really incredible once they start getting the language, once they start learning how to advocate for themselves. And then you can kind of, you know, you step back. I mean, the goal is to have them completely advocate for themselves, right? Absolutely. You, know, you don't want to um, to take that role on. But it's it, it's such an interesting thing. It's something that I've spent a lot of time thinking about and just um, observing overall so this is really interesting to me See, i mean definitely with the uh, the whole process of advocating i mean it's so it's the weirdest skill to try to teach someone <laughs> I yeah you're like oh it's you know 
you don't need to make it all about you, but you do need to go, I need attention for five minutes and it needs right. to be undivided. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Where's the perfect middle? And and I think that's a, whew, that's a, that's a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's a learning curve for sure. Well, what advice do you have for those who maybe are struggling with some kind of disability, whether it be visual or not, but getting into no matter what field they're in, but just something to kind of push themselves? And do you have anything that's like, oh, hey, it's worth it because of this or just any advice at all? Oh, absolutely. Um... I know it's kind of a big question. <laughs> no, it's a good question, though. Like, I'm trying to figure out how I would... Um... I mean, I guess the first thing that I've learned is you can't come at people and just like, hey, speak up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> um, but I mean. Well, is there, any, is there anything that helped you or anything that you kind of told yourself when you felt uncomfortable initially to kind of push you through it? Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, I've said it already what's the worst that can happen there you go you, what's the worst that can happen you get the thing you need or you continue functioning in a non-functioning half-functioning bi-functioning category mm -hmm. that you're already in uh i mean you know i i've heard oh well because i am a manual laborer if i tell them that i have a disability now they're gonna want to get rid of me because they're just seeing these things well Maybe, um, or you could tell them, hey, I have a disability. I'd still like to continue working here and they can put you in a safer place like an office. Oh, well, mm -hmm. that's not what you want to do. Okay, but you know, now you're, you've taken your risk tolerance, which is a good cyber word, um, and you've stated it to yourself. And I think the best thing you can do is A, make sure no matter what you're doing, you have longevity in it. So you know, if it's visually impaired working manual labor or working on cars or working on things and you get to the point that you can't function on the vehicle, it's safer not just for you, but the people whose vehicles you're working on uh, versus being in an office. Hey, go be, a, go be a service rider. Oh, you know what? It sounds like to me this thing. So now you're the expert telling the mechanic, hey, this is how to fix it. Um, I'm bringing this up because it's kind of personal because my a family member, like I said, who's now affected and kind of won't step away from being a mechanic. He loves it. And, but I'm like, dude, use your brain. You're, you're great at that. And he's like, ah, sure. But I'm going to keep doing this thing too. Uh, fortunately, he still ha he has way more vision left than I do. Um, very mildly affected. Um, but it's just like when he first got affected, I was like, dude, you got to say something. And I try, I had to try to teach my very stubborn family member how to advocate. And like I said, I, I didn't do it right. I could not do it. So my best advice is what's the worst can happen, right? You get the thing you want. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's great advice. I mean, think what the worst can happen, what's the worst that can happen, right? And I think sometimes when we are in an emotional state, right, we can kind of um, go to the worst case, worst case. And that's not necessarily what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Realistically, what is likely to happen? What's the quote unquote worst case scenario in that yeah. situation? Yeah, it's a great point. Well, okay, so what um, brought to your attention the ILF or how did you get involved or what brought that about? Um, actually, uh, early days, uh, DerbyCon, uh, Chris Hagnacki, hey, awesome. I'm doing a really cool thing. Um, and you're like, oh, you sit down, I'm like, okay, tell me about your really cool thing. Oh, I want to find child predators online and uh, unmask them. <laughs> I want to bring justice to those who maybe can't advocate for themselves because they are in a world they don't understand. They have been hurt and they don't know they've been hurt. There's so much trauma and things involved with predation um and things like that and it stuck out to me and i i would go to the con and i said hey i have interest but i'd never follow up and then um and then i started seeing the gear pop up i'd buy it and then um 
something spurred recently and I said, you know, I've, I've, you know, I can't, this is the whole thing with uh, going live and, and talking on stream and getting out of conference. Uh, if I would have waited another year, I wouldn't have been able to do DerbyCon. I wouldn't be able to do my favorite conference. So I started kind of going, what, what else do I keep wanting to do? Um, I, I've helped other charities in the past and uh, I, I'm an ambassador for several cool things. Um, Dead Pixel, Hack Not a Crime, uh, now ILF. Uh, and I want to keep growing that resume because again, you as an organization can go out there and say, yeah, look how awesome we are. <laughs> and you can scream it so you're blue in the face and people are going to go, cool, awesome. You do, that's great work. Oh, wait, you guys have these people there. You have Chris Hadnagy, you have, you have Blind Hacker, you have Sai, you have uh, all these other people who I see do crazy fun stuff, um, who want to donate because they want to help because they believe in the mission. And I said, okay, today's the day. Maybe I'll approach them and say, hey, um, let's see if we can, um, me, help them. Let's see if Dead Pixel can help them. Let's see if I can draw more attention from the community and say, hey, just because cons aren't a thing right now and uh, ILF and Hackers for Charity isn't sitting at a booth anymore, doesn't mean we can't help them. And, and then we go, they go, oh, okay, you're, you're right. Like, let's do a thing. And you're like, cool, yeah. <laughs> we're doing the thing right now. Um, and, uh, you know, there's like, other ways to help there's other things that can be done so then I said let's do those things <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome well I feel like with everything that's just happened the last year and a half how all of our lives have changed everyone kind of stalled out for a moment right it's like what's happening let's regroup and now um you know maybe the past six to eight months or so it's kind of started to get going again and I think people are are getting you know more involved in these communities again and just kind of seeing seeing what they can do. So this is you know I I relate to what you what you said there a lot because just because uh, our world's changed doesn't mean these things that have stopped happening, right? And we can still still cause an effect. Yeah, I mean I I don't know the numbers. I can't speak for the things. Uh, you know I know that you guys have done you know still unmasking predators, but. The one, the one thing that I see potentially being positive out of like, you know, helping you guys out is you're still doing your thing. Uh, the other positive is I see like, hopefully as the world gets back to normal and awareness does get raised that you exist, uh, people can bring you the cases, people can help mm -hmm. those things in ways that they have the capacity of helping and, and find that, you know, when we get back to <clears throat> normal, uh, when that gets back to it, we can go. Well, you know what, if you spend a little time with ILF or you spend a little time with other nonprofits and charities, you can still get that feel good feeling of helping people that like you were doing by making masks that you were doing by making stickers by making PPE like just because we don't have a global pandemic uh, killing thousands of people doesn't mean you can't feel good about trying to help, you know, raising money. Uh, saying hey i can do a thing do you guys need a thing and whether that's for ilf or other charities um i think that's my personal big push to try to say hey you can still do a thing <laughs> and, yeah absolutely <laughs> that's awesome yeah and i well that's a really good point you can i, I don't know i just i want that on a t-shirt now you can still do the thing whatever's happening in the world you know there are always still uh, things that we can get involved in and support so I, uh, well, I feel a little bit better about diving in, asking some questions on uh, the DPS <laughs> channel now. So I'm going to be over there and, you know, asking asking those questions. And I hope that some people that are on here maybe were, were hesitant to do that before will as well. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's it's an open community. Uh, you know, we're, we're starting to work with people. I, I keep asking like, hey, some things that I see that I don't have in the community. Uh, we have O centers. We have a couple other people, oh, always the more the merrier. If there's a technique out there, I guarantee you, I don't know all of them. I guarantee you, I don't know all the red teaming stuff. Yeah. Sure, doing it 15 years, I can tell you, you know, I, uh, people like, 
Oh, nice humble brag. Sure, I could break into a network in less than 30 minutes. Cool. But man, that's a highly misconfigured enterprise network, most networks. But you go, <laughs> teach me something anyway, because your tactic or technique could teach me better. Uh, but the thing that I think we're lacking at times in the community are people. I, I love seeing privacy advocates. I love seeing advocates for OSINT. I love seeing, you know, combine everything yeah. ILF does, like, you know, uh, the marketing, just talking to people. Uh, and the thing about like dead pixel too, is I'm not, you know, people share their discord. If people share their Slack, their Twitter, their, uh, found fundraisers, as long as it's not for them as an individual, I don't care if it's for them as an individual, uh, you know, usually a mod staff kind of goes, Hey, is this person on like the, you know, they're a good person list or is this person on the, ah, we're not going to kind of support that person. And and while it's typically an arbitrary decision of, hey, that's a person to the industry, you know, they're just sharing training, not trying to charge people hundreds of dollars an hour for, you know, just mentoring, like, it's, you know, teaching and mentoring is always free. But like, you know, if you're in there selling a course, because you've got a thing that you want to sell and help you make money, so maybe you can discover, hey, you know what, I'm making a ton of money on the side with uh, my little project here, I can spend more time with ILF, or I can spend more time with Deadpix, I can spend more time with other, you know, do, doing stuff. Um, those are the kind of things that usually go through my head, like, can this person, is this person, like, uh, I forgot the saying, I, I watched this wonderful video a few years ago, it's like, do good, die great, or something, and this little kid who was who said it and my voice like still just rings in my head like like just do good die great and so if you're going to do good die great like i uh, then i can get behind those kind of things so I, i'm not i don't need everybody to stay i don't need everybody to think i want people to be happy and that's kind of where the the whole mantra revolves around, so. yeah well i think that i mean what you just said is kind of key right you want want people to be happy you focus on building people up in those relationships and that's not necessarily something that people always find on uh within online communities yeah. you know a lot of the time it can it can be uh quite the opposite so just having a, a place like that and that kind of an environment is really impactful to a lot of people. Well, like you said, that the one kid that you mentioned who started out as a teenager, now he's learned so much and you've helped him even learn English. And that's, I mean, what a cool thing to have been a part of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and it's one of those things, like I want uh, my first and foremost rule since we kind of have grown, like, you know, I want everybody to be safe. So, you know, whether uh, trans, non-binary, any of any of the, you, if you feel like like community might be rejecting you due to mm -hmm. the way you feel inside versus your appearance, like Dead Pixel, we don't discriminate. We, you know, uh, it's one of those things like, come on in. Uh, women uh, underrepresented, come on in. I, uh, you know, I just want to tell you what I know and I want to hear what you know. Bottom line, that's kind of like the everything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's share experiences and respect each other for who we are as people and just focus on on building each other up. Yeah. And that's awesome. I think if uh you know everyone kind of had that that motto, that mantra, then the world would be uh, a lot more peaceful than it is, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean I, and that's why it's and, you know, it's kind of fun. I I actually like I I love getting two types of tweets or emails or whatever. The first type is, um, you know, thank you. Uh, you, you've inspired me, you did a thing. Um, you know, I still like occasionally will go to somebody's post. They say they're having a tough day. Like, hey, tell me three things that would make you happy right now. And they say, uh, example, this was an old one. Uh, somebody said, coffee, kickboxing, and I don't remember what the third one is. So here's the wild thing. That thread blew up so much so that the the person who said coffee kickboxing and, and the third thing uh turns out they were having a bad day because they were pretty much about to lose where they lived oh. by them saying coffee kickboxing whatever on my status uh turn around and they found a local group of people who do kickboxing to them oh, like, wow. worldwide somebody local to them said i love kickboxing i go to this place wait you know that place like yeah it's like right down the street from me. No way. Uh, you like coffee too? Like, yeah. 
wait, if you know, oh, I really like this place. Wait, you know that place too? <laughs> we ended up meeting up and moving in together. And, oh my like, goodness. Saving each other. Like, and I'm like, and then I get this message just years later. Like, hey man, you, you saved my life. I'm like, dude, I, I didn't do anything. I simply put words on a screen that somebody else read and you did a thing. And uh, I still love hearing it. And then, you know, of course, yep. giving away. Oh, what was our most recent giveaway? Uh, Pentest Plus. Oh, boy. Oh, um, awesome. <laughs> and uh, so we gave away the beta for the Pentest Plus. And I said, screw it. I'm going to do it myself. And then <laughs> I'm going to take it. And I'm taking this Pentest Plus uh, this week. And I'm like, this thing is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not dumb because I'm so far beyond it. It's like asking, like, it's like hacker trivia. Uh, I oh can't goodness. give away too much because there is <laughs> stuff, but it was like, it was like, what year was like, it was dumb things, dumb things, relatively speaking. Like, what year was Google invented? It didn't ask that, but like, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, well, what, what did you have a show dance started? Like, nope. What? I don't know. <laughs> it might, what year does show dance started? You can't Google it because you're being proctored. <laughs> That's what I get for not studying this darn thing. Um, and then they're like, oh, like, what's the arbitrary thing? Uh, what, what's like the 10th byte in every PCAP? And I'm like, why, why do I need to know that? I just need to know what's the we, PCAP for if it's passwords. <laughs> we have people in the chat relating to it. They're like, this is why I'm struggling to study for, for a few of these tests. <laughs> hey, I, um, I want to I jump in real fast. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got $160 showing, and we've got another $50 that came in from another direction. So we've got over $200 already coming in tonight. So uh, you guys, like, this conversation has been so enthralling. I'm like, I'm losing my focus because I'm focused on you guys, and I'm not giving shout outs to all these guys and gals out there who are donating. So oh, heck yeah, I just wanted to get that out there and say thank you very, very much. I did want to let you know. Um, we're up to 59 cases this year reported to law enforcement already. Nice. And so we're pretty excited about that. We've got eight active cases happening. Uh, I heard the word coffee brought up a while ago. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're looking at an ILF coffee coming out soon. Oh. So we're having all kinds of fun stuff here that we're just trying to get pushed out there. And uh, because, you know, so much of what we do is so dark. It's, it's not fun, right? It's hard work and yet and it's ugly so this is why we try to do some of this stuff just to have some fun and and lighten things up a bit so Absolutely. that was it i just needed to get in there and interject that uh dark roast is the question we're going to leave that up to the twitter verse do you want light <laughs> medium or dark and then we also guys we need some help with some names so you're going to have to help us with some names for the coffee too so, personally right. i'd like some tea but you know whatever one thing at a time so one thing at a time we, we're, okay. we're still we're still pushing that whiskey barrel pick but it hadn't got there yet looks like coffee's gonna come first but well, you can be wrong in your own corner <laughs> <laughs> we, we wouldn't exclude you just kind of, you can drink your tea near us just keep the smell away now <laughs> Hey, we have um, some cool conversations popping up in chat too about uh, Security Plus. Looks like there are a few people who are looking to study for it. And then we had one user say that they wrote a blog that helped study for it and okay. to reach out if anyone needs help. Oh. So that's great. Um, if anyone is looking at that, maybe reach out, contact. They said they were willing. Did I just see a $500 donation come through, guys? I'm that you did. I need someone on the back end to confirm and to thank whoever in the heck that was. That was amazing. Alethea and Tully. Oh, uh, my dear wow. friends, Alethea and Tully. Thank That's you guys amazing. so much. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. They uh they are amazing human beings alone, and I am I'm glad to call them very good friends. Uh again, it's one of those things like I've done so many kind things throughout the years and built up so many things. And then they, they have just helped me out as a person, just person to person immensely. And, and it's been one of those things like, you know, I don't even know. I can't even tell you how much they mean to me. <laughs> like it's, 
That's awesome. We we have a lot of people in chat thanking them as well. That's just, that's amazing support. And to everyone that has donated tonight, thank you so much. And this conversation, I'm like trying not to get caught up in just reading it and looking through it. Um, someone also said um, they really liked the, the point you brought out about what are three things that can make you happier right now? We have some people commenting. Uh, one comment says, my new puppy, and I just have to know what kind of puppy, oh, because puppers. that makes me happier, too. Um, the other two are electronics and gin and tonic. I support all three. Those are great. I saw some other ones. I'm losing them, but I love this conversation. This is great. It's amazing. Okay, I'm with a chihuahua mix. Okay. Oh, man. What, what's the chihuahua? So oh, that's killing me. <laughs> They're either adorable or nightmares. <laughs> I I agree. Oh, we've got a big pup. we got a big pup visiting. Sai. Definitely mixed with the chihuahua. Sai, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of pup is it again? Chihuahua. <laughs> when she stops attacking. Chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really, really large chihuahua. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? She is a Native American Indian dog. She's basically a wolf. She's about one uh, genetic marker away from being a wolf. So. Oh, jeez. I love her. Chihuahua, basically. Yeah, basically, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a mutated <laughs> chihuahua. She did so not. Mutated mutated chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> Easy, easy mistake. When you came to my Chihuahua to work day. <laughs> oh yeah, I I'm carry her around sure in a bag. Than me. The she um like small um, dogs only. <laughs> ow, and this is why I don't live in one of those things. So, uh, <laughs> ow, you're biting me. So <laughs> we have someone saying maybe she can tire out my Great Dane. Uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. I'm always down for a puppy play day. She needs friends. <laughs> Someone um, else says they have birds larger than a chihuahua in their house. So, <laughs> so this monstrosity on her hind legs is about five seven five eight. Oh my! Okay. So she big. is bigger than me. Yeah, she's very big. <laughs> birds aren't real. <laughs> birds are not real. That's true. Oh. I mean, hey, you know, so, flies at spice. Or earlier when you were talking about, you know, the the importance of. of of people and being accepting uh, a long time ago one of my favorite quotes is from a guy by the name of benjamin disraeli and he says that uh i think the quote is uh, everyone i meet is my superior and that i may learn from them absolutely and, and i always thought about that you know that no matter who it is that you run across they always know how to do likely several things better than you and you can always learn from them and I just, just my two cents. It's a quote that I love. I absolutely, I can say I, I totally believe in that. That is, that, that's the, yeah, that's yeah. great. If if you go into if you go into the world every day thinking you know everything, I don't want to take a guesstimate or judge your character, but I can probably tell you who you are in the world, <laughs> um, and I can tell you that probably uh karma wise human wise probably not one of the better humans <laughs> um well it's not someone i'm gonna want to spend my time with i can yeah, tell you that yeah. right so mm -hmm. I, a lot of people are liking that quote do you mind sorry to interrupt do you mind um just popping the name of who quoted that in the chat yeah it's benjamin <laughs> disraeli let me let me pop out and find disraeli. it and i can get you the actual quote and the correct name and the spelling and everything yeah okay benjamin Disraeli. Disraeli, yeah. <laughs> huh? From Benjamin Spence. Not that one. Got a different Benjamin there. Okay, awesome. Someone typed it in for us, so I think we'll all our OSINT masters will be able to find it. So thank you for that. And we have people wanting to brainstorm coffee names. I'm really bad at brainstorming names. Oh. But I do think <laughs> someone said innocent hazelnut. <laughs> Could be tea, um, but not. That's what I would we I think that's a great Twitter discussion. I think it's going to be a great Twitter chat. Oh, for sure, for sure. I don't even know what I'd call it. Uh, I've always just like, you know, happy medium roast, happy light roast, happy dark roast. I mean, I, yeah. I'm a very simple guy. Mandy <laughs> seems to really be into this cool beans idea. <laughs> I mean, oh, that's okay, great. Cool beans. All right, all right. It was funny, okay? 
<laughs> I mean, any Hot Rod reference is A-okay with me. My idea has been dark sense of humor. I like that the only thing that I've got so far. I, we need to get a, a thread uh, on Twitter then, started. But then, but then make it, make it a, make light, it a light roast. roast <laughs> Decaf light roast. <laughs> I'll, I'll cry. I think you might make oh. a few people cry with that one. Uh, you know, I, I remember 10 years ago laughing, and maybe probably longer, maybe, maybe 10 years ago, I was going, ugh, decaffeinated coffee. Who would do that? And then, uh, you know, here I am uh, as I've gotten older and, and, and aged, hopefully better, uh, improved myself enough that I go, it's 1030 at night. I really just want the taste of coffee. I'm I, now drinking decaf yeah. coffee. <laughs> I, you know, I have hit that point in my life as well. And it makes me want to cry a little bit. Mandy's just shaking her head. No, I won't, I won't do it. I won't do I'll it. I'll have an anxiety attack I chug, before I switch to decaf. <laughs> nah. I will chug four shots of espresso and take a nap. I will. <laughs> I'm so, unstoppable. I, I, I feel you there. And, and I've, I've literally chugged Monster because it was the thing that's sitting on my desk. It's 2 a.m. I just need to drink something and then I go back to bed. But it's like, oh. so, like it's like, I just want the taste of you coffee. You guys are the opposite of me in that I can't sleep and also can't have coffee. Oh, geez. Oh, man. <laughs> what's, your favorite, what's your favorite kind of tea? Ginger so, peach. No, that's a good one. Um, it depends. One. My go-to is usually Earl Grey with lemon. That is good, though. Very um, Star Trek-esque. And, <laughs> and then I tend to do a steamed lemonade with green tea and um, some fruity tea mixed in. Usually hibiscus or um, peach. I recently yeah, I am a- See, that's why I'm like, I want... Good. Oh, I'm just loving the coffee and tea conversations that are popping up over here. I recently found a new place near me called Epic Food Hall. So it's like a food cafeteria or what do they call this? The food places in malls, food court. Uh, But it's just the food court. Um, They have a Bulba place in there that I've been to so many times now that they they know when I come in. I just want oolong milk tea, no Bulba. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and, and i've i've joked with the the people that uh, run it every time if they could put it in a jug um i would <laughs> buy it in a jug <laughs> just bring in a gallon a gallon jug can you fill this up for me 32 ounce uh, 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 uh <laughs> you should bread. see a pup cup when i have this thing in the car <laughs> it's like a bring oh around. my goodness yeah what size do they give her uh, I asked for a pup cup once, and they gave the regular tiny little one. Will you yeah. want to eat my arm, please? And um, hey, I'm gonna hold that shut now. And then they saw her and gave like a medium cup. <laughs> Print a pup cup. Whatever the words they use are, I don't understand that. I would take her with me and then eat her pup cup. I have no <laughs> doubts about that, Mandy. Less no guilty doubt. feelings that way, huh? No. <laughs> she doesn't need all of this. I'd be like, I get half, you can have the rest. Uh, <laughs> I you. get three-fourths is what Mandy really means. It's, hey. you, you eyeball it, you know? I guessed half. We'll just send you some whipped cream, Mandy. <laughs> it's less fun, We can make then. this happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, head to Twitter for this coffee discussion. Oh, yeah, let's I keep think it going. We will have it up there shortly or start one and tag us all and we'll keep the ideas going. Uh, thank you, Joe, for joining us this oh, evening. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it was really nice having you. Uh, I really enjoyed our conversation personally and it looked like the, the chat was great as well. And to everyone that donated, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Um, just a, a reminder to everyone that's tuning in, when you donate to the IOF, you are directly funding the mission to identify anonymous child predators and help bring them to justice. So thank you so much to everyone that contributed tonight and everyone that tuned in as well. All right. Well, guys, we will see you next month. See y'all. Thanks, guys. And don't Bye. forget that the Twitch streams will happen between the fireside chats. 
I don't know what we're playing next, but we're gonna have another stream soon. Take to Twitter. Bye guys. Tell, them what to, tell us what to play. You should. Thank yeah. You all. Thank Give you. Us suggestions. Talk to you guys later. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. Good night.